Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus, you are tuned in to Lone Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and my main man, JC, John Coleman. Dio, what is popping? Bro, I am fired up. I know, why? Fired up. This weekend was a great weekend. This past weekend. What did you do this weekend? That was so well, amazing. On the inside, I was a whole lot hectic and a little bit worried because I was teaching my 15-year-old how to drive this weekend. Took her up to the local mall, Oviedo. you know, because nobody goes to malls let anymore. Let me guess, let me guess. You took her to the Macy side of the Oviedo Mall. The Macy side of the Oviedo <laughs> Mall, which for y'all that don't know the Oviedo Mall, it's um, north, east, Orlando. It's, it's an old Seminole shitty County. mall. The Not best it. ones that exist. Decrepit. No stores open. Tile floors. and the, But they have a China walk in the food court. That they do. And they really have a really good movie theater as well. That We, we, we visit the movie theater four times a year. Sticky floors. But, um, yeah. So, so I had my daughter up there on Saturday. I had her up there on Sunday. The good news is I survived. She survived. Which car did she drive? Yours? Both mine and my wife's. Wow. Which one did she like better? She likes my wife's because it's a little bit smaller than mine. Donuts? No, we weren't doing donuts, but she definitely hit some curbs. No, uh Are you serious? Yeah. You know, it's it's the the quick right with a quick right. You know, mm, like if you're trying yeah, to go around know, an yeah, island yeah, in, a, yeah, in a parking yeah. area. She does the, the the first right easily, but then she keeps the, the wheel turned. So then we cut the next right really hard instead of like make the first right, straighten out the wheel, make the second right. Mm-hmm. Parking, still disastrous. But hey. It was day one and day two, all good. She's going to be a fantastic driver. It doesn't matter. You can t- tell her to type in that AI program you blabbered out last episode, and I'm sure it'll tell her how to drive or some shit. Yes, right? Have you checked it out no, yet? No, I'm not going to either. Okay. Well, you I'm not even. Should. I'm not going to even plug it on here. That's I refuse literally to like say literally like someone it. saying, I won't get Netflix. I'm going to the yeah, Blockbuster yeah, to get me you a know, VHS. Old school. You know what? I wish they still had them around. I bet you do, but you know what? In about three years, when you want an answer to anything, <laughs> right? It's going to be like, hey, Siri, and then Siri's going to go nope, to... if I want an answer for anything, you know who I ask? My wife. Because she has answered everything. No, even if it's wrong, it's still right. Yes. Very true. <laughs> yes. Very true. No, so, but, but, but this past weekend was pretty awesome because uh, that was fun, right? Like, that, that, was, that, was in, that was enjoyable, but on my run Sunday morning... I had this like clarity, an hour of clarity. Doing out, did a nice little 10K. It was what beautiful the f- weather. What the hell is wrong with you? Beautiful weather. And I have the outline for my book. Sell Like a Stripper? Nope. That will be a chapter, though. Sell Like a Stripper will be a chapter inside of the book. Titled? Titled, Shit They Don't Teach in School. And it's... A beginner's guide to getting started. That's it. A beginner's know. guide to getting started. Shit they don't teach in school, but they should. Well, type that shit into that little algorithm and write the whole book for your ass. You know what? That's actually something <laughs> oh that I thought God. about, John. That is actually something I thought about, but then I'd have to give credit to, no, you, what, a to fake, the bot, an to AI? the AI. No, you yes. wouldn't. But honestly, I'm going to tell you something. This made me happy. This, I, I typed in some of the prompts. Oh, my God. And I read what that chapter would be like, and, and I was like, like oh, "Boring I AF." Oh, boring AF. You gotta, you gotta type, I gotta tell stories. You gotta learn the algorithm. Like, gotta learn. Like I'm gonna write a book that I would want to read. Right? It has to be 200 pages or less. Whoa! And you need to tell stories with tie downs and takeaways. Period. Psych. My book favorite. Full of pictures. Full bleed. Full bleed means like edge to edge. Edge to edge. Full bleed with pictures. pictures. All right. Well, maybe, maybe I'll let you be the illustrator of the book that I'm gonna write, John. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. But no, so um, I'm going to put it out there in the universe. Okay. I'm going to get this thing completed by the end of the year. Whoa, come on, man. Look, James Clear, who I would love to get to write the forward of this book. What wow. If? What How if? cool would that be? And then maybe like Chris Voss, right? Because I actually in, I actually uh, invoked some of Chris's um, teachings mm-hmm. when I was with my daughter and she was driving in order to, for, for her not to know that I was freaked out, and for me not to further freak her out, because she was freaked out. You know, she's just turned 15, just started driving. He talks about using the radio late night DJ voice when doing negotiating, especially oh, in what, hostage hey, situations. Watch out for that curb, honey. Yep. Oh, we hit it. So okay. I would literally say to her, all right, so we're going to come up here, and we're going to come to a complete stop. Oop. We're going to look all three ways, Oop. and then you're going to merge slowly and make a left-hand turn. 
Yes. So maybe we could get James Clear and Chris Voss to write the forward. Maybe someone like Rene Rodriguez, okay, right? Sure. To, to, to write the uh, the the forward. The forward. Yeah, I don't know something like that. Yeah, I mean, look, you get someone to write on the back cover of your page, someone to write in the in the beginning cover, and someone to write the first three pages. What is it? What I don't is know this, what they're de- called. this book Sleeves. is dedicated to? Like this is not yes. not in memory. This, of it. this book, book is, is dedicated, dedicated to, to everyone who thought I could, and everyone who doubted me. Wow, you you really thought this shit out? Boom, come right at them. Oh my god! And my parents and my children. Hardcover, paperback, all of the above. Really, all of the above. Maybe I'll get you to do the uh, the you spoken version. God, the audio book. The audio book. <laughs> Yes, I as cannot, dictated by John. Coleman. I cannot wait till this comes to fruition. A year from now, I'm like, damn, you really are an, a published author. And now instead of these new era hats, we're just giving out books. Well, by the way, it's not hard to become a published author because t- in today's day and age, you can self-publish. My my job would my, my goal would be that someone actually likes it so much. Right. They're like, hey, let me let me pick this up. Let me give you an advance. Let me like get you out in the speaking circuit so you can pump out wow. these things. Like Penguin Publishing, Scholastic Book Fair. I there remember all that shit. All right, yeah, whatever works. Well, I'll do let, it all. Let's just start in the Oviedo Library just to ease into it. Maybe we can get into the UCF Library. I'm sure they have books there. Yo, too. in some major cities, the library mm-hmm. is like one of the most gorgeous buildings in that city. Of course. Yeah. And they'll let you live there for free. Or like right outside on the steps. Oh, there you go. I was about to say, Oviedo, yeah, yeah. Library, Oviedo Library closes pretty early. but Yeah, yeah no, I mean, a, a lot of the more, the larger. Prestigious. The prestigious libraries will allow you to sleep on your steps for free. Don't worry. Yeah. So on those lines, right, here's yeah. what I'm going to do. And this is a benefit of, of hosting the podcast for as long as we have. Like we're 300 plus episodes. Jesus. And, and I've made a, a point over the past three years to truly get out there and network. And we get to have some really amazing guests on. And those guests share stories both on camera or on microphone as well as off camera and off microphone. You get to know them both personally and professionally. And I'm starting to just put together all of the notes, collab- like collaborative, mm-hmm. bring them together. And then I'm looking at, well, what are some common traits that lets a- allow someone to become more successful than most? Mm-hmm. Allows them to achieve their goals when so many others just struggle with the basics and it's not sex it's not race it's not age right there's it's it's not religion which is really cool because it's basically telling me it's it's something that all of us have in us but i have found that those that have 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 seemed to have found their purpose in life who have achieved certain levels of financial success and business success and um that their mindset's just a little bit different. They have found a way to move their needle just a couple degrees in the in the right direction further than everyone else. Maybe they're able to embrace the suck a little bit longer. Maybe they're able to give it just one more rep, right? That's Ed Milet's book, The Power of One More. But it's not rocket science, and that's the coolest part. So a lot of the book is going to be me sharing stories whether they're my stories or they're they're a friend of my stories, and don't worry, my friends, I will change the names no, I need to full, protect your no, identity. I need full government name. Or or it could be people that that I've encountered throughout my career, whether it's on the negative side or a positive side. But there's a life and a learning lesson, and I'm the first person to say that yes, I have achieved successes that others may admire, they may look up to, and I will tell them. But I have also experienced failures beyond your wildest imaginations. The only thing that I've done differently is I have picked myself up after every failure and I had the positive mindset that the next time is gonna be better Mm -hmm. because I learned something from this or I was willing to take that risk, I was willing to push that envelope because in most times, I don't write this in the book, but I'm I'm not gonna talk about it too much today. I start every decision with my worst case scenario. What's the worst thing that could happen? Then I get comfortable with that. I'm gonna take my son skydiving for his 18th birthday. I am comfortable with that worst case scenario, which is death. I understand the risk I take jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. Well, it's debatable if it's perfectly good, but jumping out of an airplane. Calculated the risk, like the odds. You better take him. No, you better take him to the indoor shit down on I drive. I did that for his 11th birthday. We're doing this one for his for his 18th birthday, John. Come on now, you gotta up your game. Okay. Step it up. Okay. No, but like I use that in extreme measure. But every decision I make, I promise, and I know my wife is like. If she were to actually listen to this podcast, which she doesn't, but if she were, 
she would like to be shaking her head right now because she worries over and over and over. And that's her job and that's her role is to worry. But I'm like, honey, I work every thought through with as much time as I'm willing to dedicate. I can't, I can't mm. dedicate two or three weeks. Some thoughts are two or three minutes. Some are two or three hours. Some are two or three hours. They should be two or three days. Mm -hmm. Rarely should they be two or three weeks. But I get comfortable with worst case. I then think about what I'll do when and if worst case happens put together a loose outline or action plan. And then I jump feet first. Hey, I got comfortable with worst case. I know if worst case happens, these are the two things I'm probably going to do or look to do in order to get out of that situation. And then I'm going to trust patterns, trust patterns. So today's episode, not geeking out over mortgages. Thank God. Thank God. No more LLPA talk. God. No more DTI. Thank you. Yes. No. Let's talk about five steps or tactics or tricks, techniques, strategies, strategies. That's a good word, John. Five strategies that anyone can deploy in order to make this year or really any year their best. Fuck that sexy. Their best. Now, by the way, it doesn't mean that next year won't be better and the year after won't be better, mm -hmm. right? We should constantly be striving for improvement, 1% better, while also taking the time to recognize and realize how grateful we are for what we have accomplished. All right, so I picked five. Um, there's about 37 things I wrote down. The 37 things that I wrote down are gonna go into the book. Okay. And I don't know if the book's gonna be 37 chapters or 20 chapters where we're gonna combine what I thought were mm -hmm. chapter ideas into, into one chapter. I'm sure a actual editor will help me with that. The in in the interim, I just need to get the the, the rough draft manuscript. I can't believe draft. this is going to happen. Actually, I called this. I actually said this like two years ago. I, I know, like, and I told you two years ago I didn't want to write a book. I know, but I was right yet again. Yet again, Yet again. John, yep, I, another point for John Coleman. Da ding All right, so here are the five strategies in no particular order. In no particular order. Actually, yes, there are. The first one's the most important one. Okay. Hey, listen, y'all. You want to make this year or any other year your best year? invest in yourself. It is the best ROI for your time and your money. Yourself, invest in you. What does that mean? That means for some of you, invest 130 bucks every two weeks to go sit down with a mental health counselor to talk about your issues. We all got issues, talk about them. Listen to a third party, heed their advice, work through them, right? It could be just reading a book, pick up Atomic Habits, Pick up the power of one more, right? Read something that's written by John Maxwell, mm -hmm. right? It could be attend a conference. It could be learn to cook healthy meals and be willing to spend the extra 30 bucks a week that it takes to eat healthy because your body is a brain. It's a soul. And it's also the physical aspect. And they all three need to be for the most part in balance. Meaning am I eating healthy? Am I exercising my body? Am I exercising my brain? Am I also exercising my heart, which is my emotions, right? Am I talking to people about my feelings? Am I exercising my brain by stimulating it with continuing education, with new ideas and new thoughts? Mm -hmm. You need to invest in yourself. And by the way, this is going to be a core concept all throughout. And I'm swiping and adapting this from Mike Smalley, my business partner, who also, I'm sure, swiped and adapted from someone else. I don't mm. know where it originates, but I'm just, I'm gonna, for some of y'all, it originates right here on TLOP. All right, word. Perfection is the enemy of done. Think about that. Perfection is the enemy of done. Quit trying to wait for it to be perfect. Just go do it. Don't try to find the best book to read first. I need to find the best mental health counselor. I need to, to find the best gym with the best classes. Crunch fitness. No, you need to walk your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You need to find any mental health counselor that you can sit down with. You need to pick up a book that was recommended and read it, right? So perfection is the enemy of good. That goes across the board in every aspect. Today is the best day to start whatever it is that you want to do. You want to quit smoking? Today's a great day. I don't care if you had three cigarettes already. I don't care if you have a half a pack unsmoked. Today's a great day. Mm -hmm. Today is the best day. So investing in yourself offers the best ROI. All right. And, and by the way, this is, 
me as a practitioner, but also me as a podcast host, where we had the opportunity and the ability to interview. I'm talking like CEOs and presidents of, of people, companies yeah, yeah. and and fintech entrepreneurs and top producers, mortgage millionaires, like yeah. the best of the best. These are these are things that either I have learned from others and implemented into my life, or I've learned from others by being a witness to their success, asking the right questions and taking notes. Mm -hmm. All right. The second thing I have written down, be dumb enough not to quit. You're dumb because you what? Yeah, be dumb enough not to quit. You got to be so hard headed that you are willing to not give up. You got to trust the process. That sounds cliche, but it's true. If someone tells you it takes two years, bank on it taking three. Not, oh, I'm special. I'll get it done in, in nine months. I hope you do. Word. But no, be dumb enough not to quit. You got to stick with it. And then understand, like you can't do it all at once. But imagine this. And we talk about me doing the Ironman recently or training for triathlons. I didn't wake up to do that. Right. I didn't just wake up and say, yep, I'm going to go do this. I'm not saying people can't if they're in really good shape, mm -hmm. but I'm saying it took me three years to get myself in a, in a situation where I was ready for it. I didn't wake up and say, yep, I'm good enough to write a book. Like, what did it take? You said I was going to write a book two years ago. I said, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> so it took me a being ready, but B it took an extra 200 episodes. Yeah. That many more interviews, that many more speaking engagements, mm -hmm. right? It took me writing for publications, whether it's the originator guide, which we have an article dropping in, in next month's episode or Damn. next month's um, uh, magazine yeah. or for housing wire for me to gain the confidence. And I'm like, you know what? I think I can do this. Right. Now I'm going to have to write it down, put it out in the universe and stick to it. Cause now I have to write basically what's going to end up being darn near uh, three to five pages a week would allow me to have this book completed by the end of the year. Okay. So dumb enough not to quit. I'm not gonna write a book in one week or one month. I'm gonna write it over 10 months, 11 months, right? That's just consistency. When I launched my real estate investment company, we are going into year three. No, this is year three. This should be our breakout year. And if it's not, guess what? Next year will be our breakout year. <laughs> yeah. But it's three years of us getting up every single day, putting one foot in front of the other and, and accepting that we're working really hard and making very little money. Sure, we've had our big pop, 70 grand here and 100 grand there. But we've also gone months where we didn't acquire property or we didn't disposition property. When I launched my career as a mortgage loan originator, same exact thing. It took me two years before I was making serious money. Ian McDonald who's one of the best of the best of the best in our industry as a mortgage loan originator. He was on the show recently. He said three years. Mm -hmm. May I look at um, what we're doing right now. This is year three for us getting ready to start. Mm -hmm. Next month starts year three, yep. right? Or no caps off year three begins year four. What? We finally found our voice. Is that math right? Is that math right? No, we I started in 2020, 2020 to 2021, 21 to 22, 22 to 23. Yeah. Three year anniversary, John, coming up around March 1st. Damn. And we just, just feel like, now. yeah, like, hey, we, we know who we are. We know the direction that we're going. So be dumb enough not to quit. All right. The third thing, and I'm about to look at my notes here and hope I can read my handwriting. Because again, I, I try to take my favorite five out of like 37 <laughs> that, that I, um, that, uh, and we've talked about this before, the, 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 the third one. Y'all focus on earning. Focus on earning. What am I going to do today that's going to make me a lot of money? Sometimes you have to think bigger, right? That's a hard thing. When I was 23, all I wanted to do is make 100 grand by the time I was 30. So much money. That's all I wanted to do. I'm like, man, if I can make 100 grand by the time. And then when I was like 31, I was like, man, there's some people in this industry making 300 grand a year. I want to do that. I want to do that. And that's sort of making people who make a million dollars a year. I'm like, well, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I started meeting people who not only made a million dollars a year, but they already had $10 million saved. What? I'm not there. I want to get there. Right? So you focus on earning, but you also need to think bigger. Right? It's a lot easier to save 20% and tithe 10% when you're making more money than you can spend. It's very difficult to save 20% and tithe 10% when you're earnings are limited. Mm -hmm. 
So for many people who deem success financial, not not all do. So I don't want to be that person that says, oh, you got to make a lot of money to, to, to be deemed successful. No, you don't. Mm -mm. No, you don't. Like, I'll be the first to say, I have one life that I remember, and I'm irrelevant. And this is going to be a little bit tricky for some people to wrap their heads around. By the way, this is a little sidebar, right? This is not one of the five I had written Let's down. Let's go down the rabbit hole. But we're going to go down this rabbit hole. Think about this. Think about how many people are in your neighborhood, and then how many do you know? Right, my neighborhood is 110 homes. I maybe know 20 of those homes. That's one neighborhood in one town, in one county, in one state, part of one country. That's a part of one earth. I'm pretty insignificant. What, what I do and say doesn't really matter. What I accomplish will be forgotten within a couple decades of me passing away. But what does matter is how I treat people. What does matter is how I leave when I do leave. Do I leave it better? Do I impact some lives in a positive manner to where maybe they can take a piece of what I trained and taught them and pass it along, right? So I'm a firm believer that, look, you are insignificant, John. I am insignificant. But how we treat people has a, has a, a much longer lasting time. Effect, a much longer residual effect. Yes. Um, so you just keep that in mind um, because it's not all about making money. Right. Like, but for many of us, we have certain financial goals. Mm -hmm. If you have certain financial goals that you're trying to achieve, focus on earning. That's something that I think you want to make this your best year. Make sure you add that to it and focus on earning, by the way, could be opening up that tutoring side hustle that you've always dreamt of doing because maybe you're a school teacher and that's your passion and you love doing it. And it comes with great, uh, retirement benefits. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But. If you're missing the boat on certain things financial, what says that you can't teach or tutor on the side? Okay. All right. Um, number four, I stole this from Tim Davis. So Tim and I are speaking at an event this week together. Um, so I'm going to see him again. He's flying in from Nashville and I'm sure again, Tim stole it from someone else, but it's the whole saying that your net worth is the sum of your net work. Okay. In other words, you are the sum of the company you keep. So for many of us, we have to look at how many people do I know and what types of people are they? Ooh, interesting. That could be a total mind F, right? Because if you want to achieve certain things in life, whether it's spiritual, whether it's mental, whether it's, it's financial, whether it's, it's going into a new hobby, right? I want to become a better triathlete. I had to go join the Central Florida Tri Club, something I just recently did, right? And the way that I knew I was going to join it is I paid my damn money. Mm -hmm. That's how I did it. Right? I haven't gone to, to an um, event yet. I'm going to go tomorrow. They have a cycling class. But I first started by just attended their open house and I paid my money, okay? That's the whole, like, you are the company you keep, you have to expand your network. You need to be around who you want to become. And we don't focus on that. We, we get very comfortable with the people that we know already. We get very comfortable doing the things that we already do with the people we already know. Well, nothing changes if nothing changes. So if you want to change, if you want this year to be better than last year, something has to change. That change may very well be your network. Who are you hanging out with? There may be some people that limit your beliefs. They may be dragging you down. You may love them, like love them with all of your heart. Doesn't mean you need to spend as much time with them. Cut them off. Maybe not cut them off, <laughs> but you maybe have that conversation with them. Yeah. Like I find, especially for entrepreneurs and, and people that are 100% commission sales, sometimes the people who love you the most are your biggest detractors. They're the people that are like, oh, John, you sure you should be doing that? I don't know if you John, should do that. John, yeah, I'm just looking out for you, bud. I love you. I'm looking out for you. You're going to get hurt. That seems dangerous. Hey, you know what? Here's a muzzle. Here's a ball gag. Put Shut it on. up. And I'm going to put I'm gonna put in my, 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 my earbuds, and I'm going to crank up some too short, and I'm going to drown you out because I got laser focus. I know the direction I'm going, and I'm ready to embrace the suck because I'm dumb enough not to quit. And I'm investing in myself all along the way, and I'm going to surround myself with the types of people that I want to be more like. I see what you did there. I spit on you is what I just well, did. Almost, if you're watching on almost, YouTube. And almost did. You're like one of those soccer coaches during the intramurals that got really into it. At least I didn't get up in your face. 
God, I know that was the last game I showed up to. <laughs> <laughs> and then, hey, the fifth thing. Follow patterns. Follow patterns. Do you know why we talk about Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos? Do you know why we talk about Elon Musk? Because they're billionaires and super weird. Super weird's a good word. Billionaire is a fact. They're outliers. They're outliers. That's why we talk about them. Do you know why we talk about Muggsy Bose? Because he's short. Yeah, one of the only and most successful five foot three NBA basketball players. I'll cross his ass up. Yeah, we talk about him so much because he's an outlier, mm -hmm. right? Follow the patterns. If you want to be as successful or give yourself the highest level of success in the NBA, you should probably be between 6'7 and 6'9 and freakishly athletic. If you want to play professional football, there's a couple things that you should probably be depending on the on the position. Mm -hmm. Meaning if you're not over six foot three, you're probably not playing offensive line, period, end of story. If there is one in the NFL who is under six three, we talk about him because he's an outlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Bill Gates, Elon Musk, who else have I throw in there? Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos. Sure, yeah, yeah. Freaking outliers. For most of us, we need to be ordinary. We need to be boring. We need to follow the patterns. What are people who have achieved the level of success that you're trying to achieve doing? How did they get there? Where did they come from? Where are they going? What books are they reading? What groups are they a part of? What conferences are they attending? What coaching companies do they pay? And that's what you want to do. Follow the patterns, right? Quit trying to reinvent the wheel. Quit trying to be an outlier. Statistically, the odds are forever against you. Why do I lose my asset craps, John? Because you're a shitty gambler? Yeah, because I play all of the corny. Corn high yo. All the corny. Yes, all the all of the corny bets. I don't want to be boring on a craps table. So I am okay being a loser. <laughs> I am okay leaving more broke than I showed up. It was a good time, though. Because it was a good time. Yes, I understand that's my entertainment, not my career, not my livelihood, and not my life. Mm -hmm. Right? But for most of us, we need to follow the patterns. And that's five. I'm going to write a whole entire book of this, John. I can see it in your eyes. I wish I could do a, like, talk to text the whole damn you book. You can. There's there's services out there that are like will write the book with you, a.k.a. you just sit there and just talk and it'll write it for you. All right. If y'all know of someone like that who's really good, proven, and successful, I'm going to follow the patterns, by the way. I'm going to follow the patterns. I'm going to want references. But yes, I would love. Yo, tag someone. Yo, someone in the comments, tag R.L. Stein if he's still around because. Do you know R.L.? Stein? I know yeah. his books. Do you know what books he wrote? Nope. I have no Are idea. Are you serious? No. Nope. You're not a child of the 90s, Dustin. Maybe R I wasn't a reader R until, until September of 2019, John. R.L. Stein, Goosebumps. Get your shit together. I was I was actually too old for Goosebumps. You know, I know you were still reading it in high school because that's the reading, the reading level you were on. That shit was extra credit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guess what? I didn't need extra credit. Yeah, learn to cheat better. You don't need extra credit, John. You were a good cheater. Full circle. Do you think my son would do that? Yeah. Well, apple doesn't yeah. fall far from the tree. Oh, gosh. No, that's it. Um, so, y'all, check this out. We're going to be uh, hosting a Lone Officer Live, the Lone Officer Podcast Live event called TLOP Live. Orlando. We're going to do an event in Orlando. It is March 2nd. Check our website, theloneofficerpodcast.com or tloponline.com. This event is specifically for people in the mortgage industry mm -hmm. where uh, we're going to have top producers teaching, mm -hmm. motivating strategies, tactics. I'll speak. JC will be there. It'll be a great time, and it's going to be free thanks to our sponsors. Mm -hmm. And um, be on the lookout, right? We've done Tampa. We've done Orlando. We're going to do West Palm. Damn. Looking to do probably Dallas, possibly Boise. Um, I have agreed to do up to 16 cities. Orlando is going to be the second. West Palm will be the third. This is getting out of control. Now it's going to be a good time, John. I'm Let's excited. go hit the road. People can come and meet you and tell you how tall you are. Wow, you sound just like you. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think I was going to sound like? 
No, nah, it's a good time. We love getting out there. It's a great time. And, and really, shout out to the uh, the twenty five folks who showed yeah. up. Uh, yeah, shout out to the t- yeah, shout out yeah, to the but folks like, that like showed literally, up. Literally, shout out to the T Loppers. I, I think we had an opportunity to, to get to know and speak with each and every one of them mm-hmm. at least for three to five minutes, if not fifteen. So shake hands. We even had baby. a college kid. Shout out to Josh from Maryland. Shout out Josh. Josh, senior in college at the University of Maryland, hopped his happy ass on an airplane, flew to Orlando for the T Lop event. Word. Shout out Under Armour. Yes, and then uh, heck, who we had Ash rolled in from uh, Miami. Yeah, she drove it like started like two a.m. Shout out Ash. Yeah, shout out to Ash coming in. Um, we got people uh, driving up from Naples, Sarasota. Yeah, yeah, it was a good time. So anyhow, we're gonna repeat that in Orlando. Do it again in West Palm, and um, yep, it's gonna be fun. So keep on checking us out. Keep on sharing. Keep on liking. Mm-hmm. So five star reviews is a great way to say thank you, especially yeah. if you're on Spotify or you're on Apple. Hitting us up on the website, becoming a at least freemium member of the mm. website. But hey, if you want the good shit, the best scripts, the best training videos, the best resources, we do ask you for a $25 donation. All of that money gets reinvested back into the company so that we can continue to do what we do, mm-hmm. do what we love, and make it better for you, yeah. the audience. You saw them sexy banners at the last event. Yeah, that shit ain't free. That shit is not free. Yep, but we do take your donations <laughs> yeah. in exchange for our great content, mm-hmm. and then we reinvest it back in. But And go to YouTube. Even if you're not a YouTube person, do me the favor. Yeah. Go to YouTube and subscribe. It's ticking up, man. And, and tell your friends to do the same exact thing. We have 300-plus episodes. And check this out, because I get this. Hey, Dio, I need an episode on blah, blah, blah. The best way for me to search our content, because I don't have a catalog. John, one day when we have enough money that you can hire an assistant, like a marketing type assistant, a content assistant, I would love to have a menu or a catalog. But if you go to YouTube, Mm -hmm. by the way, you can search on the YouTube channel Mm -hmm. on keywords. Yes. So like I was looking for an episode we did with someone who's a real estate coach. Mm -hmm. And I literally typed in real estate coach and up came Rick Bosley's episode Shout out Rick from Bos. like two years ago. I know. So y'all, please continue to follow us. We love the support. Mm-hmm. Um, IG, Facebook, we're on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Come find us. Come connect with us. Give us your feedback. Let us know how we're doing. And tell a friend or five. Tell a stranger too. That's just worse. His name is John Coleman. I'm Dustin and That's all the time we have for you today. But we'll catch you on the next episode. Peace. Bye. Bye.